What's up everybody, this is BS for Build. I'm Chris. Today, uh, where our focus is getting this car ready to be my daily driver. There's just a few little things to button up, like putting on the side skirts, the front lip for the front bumper, mounting the front bumper, putting all the front bumper accessories together, as well as um, waterproofing some areas. So if you remember when we installed the wide body, we did some quarter panel cutting. We need to waterproof that area and waterproof some of the areas under the front, uh, under the hood, so we don't get water flying up off of the wheels. Uh, that's the game plan. Also, unfortunately, we are going to take the window louvers off. Um, since I put them on there and since I got the paint job, this car is really coming together and looking more like a daily driver. It's kind of lost a little bit of the feel that I was feeling of it being more DIY, more track, more um, kind of a, a home brewed project car. Uh, it doesn't really look like that to me anymore. And now what I'm seeing is these are kind of really taking away the attention as well as since I don't have a top piece that I like and I don't really have time to engineer a piece. Um, I'm really not liking kind of the flow that it leaves the body. It just seems like it's this chunk right here, whereas if it kind of had a flow to it, I'd be a lot more happy with it. So I'm keeping those. I think they're totally success, success building wise, and I'm going to be thinking about how to build top piece, and I'd be looking for those to end up on the, B, uh, the plan B, which is going to be much more of a track car. It is going to be my track car, but it's going to be much more of a track car feel as well. A lot more project car uh, feel. So. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be pulling those off and getting the ready, uh, the car ready for the final touches, so it can be my daily. Uh, stay tuned. All right, guys. So uh, as some of you already know, we got an FRS front bumper for our BRZ, uh, mainly just because of aesthetics. I like the look of it better. So um, it's time to put some of this stuff together. We have. I went ahead and bought. Um, this trim piece and a fog light set to fill the uh, the big hole in the bumper. So this is uh, got a couple pieces to it. We got to fill this spot with something, um, and then we have our light which goes in here. So we need to mount this light in the bumper around there somewhere, um, and then we'll mount this and figure out a way to cover up this hole with something that's uh, decent looking. Then what we need to do is grab our wiring kit and. Uh, we're going to wire in our fog lights, the plugs, into the uh, stock OEM uh, wiring plugs for the fog lights. That way uh, the button on the inside of the car will work just fine. So that's the game plan. We need to get this bumper uh, put back together and tomorrow I'll have the grill that goes inside here. Alright, so what we went ahead and did was, uh, I think if I remember correctly on the FRS, this is a big, there's a big light right here, I think. and. Uh, if I also remember correctly, it was really expensive. And since we had a light right here, I thought it was a little bit redundant to have two sets of fog lights. So um, what I did was I, I went and grabbed some cardboard and built a template. And then I'm gonna take this and grab some of the scrap sheet metal that we had from the louvers. I'm gonna cut that out of metal and then we'll spray it with a flat black and then we're gonna epoxy it onto here to block out this area. You could also use some mesh and stuff like that, but I think I'm just gonna do a really nice dark satin black and that way it'll just kind of look like voided space. Hopefully it won't draw people's eye or attention um, until I come up with something better. So that's the next step. We're gonna cut this, well, we're gonna take this off and use this to trace it out on some sheet metal and cut it out of sheet metal. All right, so I went ahead and cut out uh, these pieces out of sheet metal and I can throw these in here and they actually look really cool as raw metal. Um, that's what they look like. And uh, they, they bent and molded with the uh, line of this thing really nicely. Uh, so what we're gonna ahead and go ahead and do is, uh, I changed my mind from flat black, I'm gonna go gloss black to try and match the bumper and this. So we're gonna go gloss black on these. I'm gonna paint them today and tomorrow I'll glue them in there. And then the day after we'll be able to actually put this piece back in there. So for now we're just gonna be rolling with fog lights in there. Um, but yeah, like I said, so uh, I'll get these painted up real quick and then we're gonna start uh, placing the fog lights in here and test fitting them in and getting everything ready to be wired up. All right, so we got our fog lights and our trim pieces in. We still have this hole here, and we're gonna deal with that tomorrow. Um, next thing we gotta do is wire up the front, and while we wire up the front, I'm also gonna get this front lip installed from the uh, Rocket Bunny V1 kit. All right, guys, so here's the best way we figured out how to mount this lower lip. Um, it doesn't really, this one, I, it could be a fitment issue or something, it doesn't really seem like the right way to go on, but I, I, I think it is. Anyways, it's the way this one's meant to go on. So what you do is you put, well, 
Can't really do this. You need a friend and, and you line it up basically bottom, bottom of this with the bottom of your bumper. And then you slide this part in right here so it's flush with your holes right there. And then the other side too. So our bumper's gotta make a little squeeze to fit that. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and do that and then tape one side up so Adrian can come over here, help me and hold it in place while I put some self tapping bolts in and we're gonna throw a bunch of bolts all the way along there. piece of the puzzle that I want to do is just those backup safety measures that we talked about with the window louvers and other things because I can't take anybody complaining about me killing the world with any more of these mods. So what we're going to do is drill a hole in the back of these, throw this on here correctly, our DIY bumper holder. Um, I'm just going to drill a hole in the back of this and then there's a hole right here we're going to attach it with a zip tie, same with the other side. And that way, if for some reason all, what is this, eight of these screws, eight, ten, if all ten of these screws come out um, without us noticing, the thing will fall off and then the zip ties will hold it on so it doesn't fly behind us or anything crazy like that. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that and then this front bumper is ready to go on. All right, so uh, what we gotta do next is we're gonna loosen up these wheels because as you guys mentioned, they are definitely on backwards. We're gonna loosen these up and then we uh, have to jack this side of the car up to prepare to mount the side skirts. Side skirts, excuse me. So yeah, we're gonna uh, jack this up, throw some jack stands under here, jack the other side up, swap the wheels, and then mount the side skirts. All right, so we got our side shirts on. Uh, we use some double-sided 3M tape and, uh, and then just a bunch of self-tapping um, big-headed uh, screws. There's probably about 12 screws running along the length of the car there. And it's on nice and strong, nice and sturdy. So uh, that's all good. Now we're gonna jump over to the other side and do that side. All right, we set ourselves a very strict goal for tonight. Get the car in rolling condition. Bumper on, side skirts on, some other stuff, and then go to Buffalo Wild Wings and get some wings. All right guys, well we're having a couple clearance issues. We built a, a little bit of support to help keep the bumper out where we want it, but uh, we're having some problems with the side bumpers uh, coming unclipped and the wheels uh, hitting some metal underneath, so we're gonna need to trim that metal off. And that is gonna be a job for tomorrow because uh, wings are almost closing. It's almost midnight, so we gotta go get some dinner and, uh, and get back and, uh, tomorrow. Uh, I'll be hitting it hard. I'll be trimming some stuff underneath here to make clearance for the wheels and uh, take this baby out for a drive. What's up guys? We're back in the shop and uh, this is really weird to say but this is the last uh, planned day to be working on this car. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a strange feeling to say the least. Um, but yeah, uh, today's the day. Uh, when we're done with this, we should, the car should be, I mean, done for its initial uh, build stage. Not to say that there's not more stuff that will be added onto this car, and it'll probably break and need things fixed. But uh, today's the day, so it's going to be a long night. Um, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited. So the things that are left on our list are we need to put the front grill in. Um, I need wheel clearance. Um, that's what we were working on last night. And then we need to do waterproofing. So um, waterproofing should probably be done first and then worry about other stuff, but I do want to get a little bit of work done on this front bumper uh, before I move on too far. So the big problem we ran into last night is we didn't have wheel clearance because the bumper really needs to be sitting out the right way. We don't have the under uh, mud guards and mud flaps and all that uh, jazz, and we also don't even have the points that where you're supposed to mount them. There's a lot of pieces under there that cost a lot of money when you add them all up that uh, help mount this bumper in the right spot. So I've been building some custom brackets and they're built. Um, they're not finished being built, but they're, they're on their way there. And what that's gonna do is make sure that this, like you can see right now, that this bottom piece is really, really sturdy, much more sturdy than the side pieces. Uh, anyways, it's on there really, really good. So I'm gonna expand on that and build off of that a little bit more. But then what we need to focus on is the side pieces and making sure that they're gonna stay clipped into the car. So there's a couple other ways to do that, but I would really like this bumper to not be too 
hardcore maps it onto the car in case it catches an edge or it catches a lip or something. I really don't want to have like a massive catastrophe. I'd rather it pop off, kind of more drift style. But uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be realistic for my daily driver. Uh, on the on the plan B, we can definitely have it that way. But on this one, it's going to be it might have to be a little bit more hard mounted. So. That's what we're working on today. I'm gonna to pull this bumper back off and then I'm gonna start uh, getting ready to wire in the fog lights, install the front grill, uh, put our little inserts into the, the trim piece and uh, get this bumper wrapped up. Okay, so problem one with our fitment was this wheel, every time we turned it was hitting this bottom bracket. And uh, that probably means that we ordered too big of wheels or spacers. Uh, but it's just barely hitting it. So this bracket is, I don't know, two to three inches tall. Um, and there's another mounting hole up here for the fender to mount into this bracket and also mount into the headlight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our chop saw, I'm going to cut down around here and trim a little bit of the bottom of this bracket off. We'll still have all our structural stability bolt in up here. And then I'm going to cut right down through here and give our wheels some clearance to go through. And that will help with uh, the problem that we were having with the bumper because basically when this wheel would hit this it would lift uh, and shift the front course port of the car a little bit and then that was making the bumper want to kind of wiggle off. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Alright, well I've been doing kind of a bad job of uh, keeping you guys up to date. but uh, So I trimmed this piece right here, coming over to the other side, uh, trim this piece up right here and uh, that's given us wheel clearance. Now I'm down here, this is the cable for the fog light and my fog lights take this plug so we're going to cut the end off of this one and splice in this one. And we gotta do that on both sides. And then over there we have the bumper that we are working on. Um, we have the inserts over there on the table and those uh, trim pieces we made out of metal earlier turned out looking all right. So they're being um, epoxied into that hole right now. And then they'll be ready to go on. And then the hard work, uh, well, then the next thing is we're gonna come under here and we need to develop some waterproofing so you can see right through to the ground there and you can see the tire and that just can't stand so we need to develop some waterproofing that goes under here under the fuse box and connects to the body of the car so water can't fly up. Alright guys so sorry I've been jumping around a lot but here's what we got. We've got our plugs down here that are wired in now um, and I'll snip that zip tie off and this just runs into the front bumper and plugs into the lights and then I've been working on waterproofing and uh, so this is what I did, a little DIY. So, so the, the stock, the OEM mud guard uh, comes up and it blocks the water from getting into this whole area of the car. But it comes up and it comes right back down around here. So it would come down on the tire about two inches shut. And I tried to run with them, did not work at all. So here's what I did, I just drilled some small holes where the car's frame basically stops. And, uh, and then I extended it with some sheet metal that we used for the louvers. So that's getting me out about another eight or nine inches. And that covers the area where I can set my fuse box back down into here. And so what that's really going to do is, yes, it doesn't look pretty, but I don't care how my engine bay looks. And that's going to protect my uh, fuse box from getting water flung up at it from underneath the wheel. So over here you have the, let me turn the light. You have the ABS system and some other stuff. Uh, it's a little bit more waterproof, uh, but it should still be done over here too. And it actually was really fun to do and didn't take that long. So I'm going to do the same thing over here and get that all set up. So we're a little bit more waterproof than we would have been before. And then it's time to move into the back and figure out a solution for the back. One cool thing about this is these rivets are super, super strong. This is really, really way more sturdy than I thought. It's 18 gauge uh, sheet metal and uh, man, it's tough. So that is pretty cool. All right, the waterproofing is complete, and uh, now it's time to uh, do a little bit of working on this bumper. So here's the problem that you have when you do this uh, installation. Apologize for all the handprints. They show up on camera a lot more than they do with your own eyes. Anyway, so your, your bumper goes to about here, and then you have to cut it off to get make room for the body kit. And that means that your clip is shortened, so you don't have all the clip that you used to, and you just don't have all the clipping power. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I, I salvaged uh, some of these off of some other parts and these are the little threaded clips. And I'm going to go ahead and place a threaded clip in here, underneath here, right about there. And then I'm just going to drill a hole in this piece right here and do kind of a traditional uh, bolt from underneath through there into the threaded clip, bolting this into that. Like I said, if it gets ripped off, it's going to be a hell of a problem. It's probably going to rip this whole piece off. Um, so let's just hope that my bumper doesn't get ripped off for any problem for any reason, excuse me. 
So that's the game plan. I'll show you guys that once it's completed. All right, we got our bumper on there nice and strong. We have not put our front grill in yet, just in case I need to get under there again. Um, everything's mounted up. I got enough wheel clearance, um, just barely. There might be a little bit of scraping, but that's something I'll work with later. Uh, we have not waterproofed the rear quarter panels yet. That is still to come, but it's like 9.30 or something. And I haven't eaten yet, so I'm gonna try and take this thing for a spin down the street and uh, see how it handles going down the street, trying to get me some food. First food run in the BRZ. Well, I honestly can't believe this, but I've lost the keys. They're in the car somewhere because it starts, but I can't find them. Aha, they were in the trunk. All right, now it's time to go get some dinner. I'll be back with a status update. Alright guys, well, it would be no fun without a little bit of challenge, so here's the problems that I got left that I'm just going to go ahead and fix off camera. It looks like we got an air bubble in our radiator. Um, the radiator is not heating up evenly. It's all hot at the top and cold at the bottom, normally a sign of an air bubble. Um, and we got rubbing on the front wheels. We still have rubbing. Um, I did as best I could to get as much space in there, but I didn't get enough, so we're either going to have to trim some of the body off or come up with a unique solution. If anybody's got a good idea of how I could get that front bumper further away from the car, I mean, I've, I think I've thought about pretty much everything, but uh, I'm curious. I think what this is is that my wheels, the, it's just the wheel tire and spacer combo is just not meant to be. I think that I'm just using the wrong stuff. So uh, that's an issue. I could space the wheel out another inch and that might gain me space or I'd lose space. I'm not sure, it might, it might do something um, interesting. So I do have that as an option. But um, it's been a really fun two days of work. We got a lot of stuff done, so I still need to waterproof this back part, fix the air bubble in the radiator, and then gain myself a little bit more wheel clearance. It's just barely rubbing, just a little bit, but I don't really want it to rub at all. It's gonna be my daily driver. So, uh, but I did drive it up and down the street a lot, and it's pretty fun. Um, with that, that's the end of this episode. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you wanna support the channel, head over to beisforbuild.com, buy anything from the shop and all that uh, proceeds from that goes to helping us with our builds like this. And uh, check us out at facebook.com slash BS for build. And we are BS for build on Instagram. And obviously you're on our YouTube channel and that's where we are. Please like this video and subscribe. Peace.